nombre es Mercedes Guión, presidenta de la Cámara de Comercio Hispana de la Bahía de Tampa Bay. And today we have a very special guest. But before I do the introduction, I would like to share with you guys how to get in touch with the chamber. And you can call us at 813-867-3550. Or you can go to our website where you can see all of the perks and the benefits of becoming a member at www.tampahispanichamber.com. And that way you can see if you were to choose to be part of this big community and all of the privileges that you get by being part of this amazing chamber. So with no more ado, let me introduce you to Sergio Puerta with Construction Casualty Insurance. And please take notes because you need what he's got. <laughs> please. Hello, members. Uh, happy to be here. Again, Sergio Puerta over here. I'm an insurance consultant with Construction Casualty Insurance. And um, the best way to reach me at is by either calling me or texting me, whatever you think is easiest for you. And that number is going to be 305-790-8656. Awesome. And, you know, that's amazing because a lot of times I was just in a meeting yesterday and someone said, oh, no, you cover Tampa and I'm in St. Petersburg. I said, no, we are the Tampa Bay Chamber. So we cover St. Petersburg, and that's where you are located. So it's just so good to have the people crossing the bridge and go ahead and commingle with us because we are family. But I do have some questions. I'm going to ask what I know you would like to ask. So I'm going to be your voice today. So let me start with these questions. What is the current state of the market for property, general liability, business auto, and workers' compensation insurance? Yeah, so let's just start with the, with the hot button here, which is the commercial auto. Yes. Everybody's like, what's going on with my premium? It's going up every year. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, it is, it is a tough market right now. Um, uh, there's a lot of lit litigation going on with um, all, the, all the accidents that occur. You know, we, we got attorneys that get involved. We, we got the shops that know when, whenever it's an insurance, mm -hmm. an insurance claim, they're, they're hijacked hiring, the prices. Hijack the prices. And and with that, you know, it's it's this. So yeah, that's that's what the market is. It, it's it's going up every year, wow. and um, and what we want to do is uh, we just want to make sure that your agent is looking for all the possible markets that are out there, um, and just making sure that uh, the market fits exactly that the industry that you're in, mm -hmm. and the it's way it's important. Yeah, it's very important. Mm -hmm. You got to make sure that. Your your agent has access to all the markets um, that 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 fit your 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 industry, and the biggest how we're combating that is uh, we're actually looking for solutions outside of insurance. Okay. So one thing that we do is that um, we try to go over your hiring practices. Um, mm -hmm. We help you with uh, taking the NVRs. Mm -hmm. Um, and another thing that has been recently popular to help give you some relief in, in premium is using monitoring devices such as uh, telematics. Mm -hmm. um, there are some companies that will give you a credit mm -hmm. if you use it. Mm -hmm. um, and there's other companies that are really competitive and require you to use it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's one the thing. The one that we are with does that. Yeah. They literally send it to us like yeah. in your face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's, so, so we have to look for solutions of title insurance and that's where we, we come in. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, there's actually uh, a new carrier in town. It's mm -hmm. called um, Firmatics. Mm -hmm. And uh, they actually charge you by the mile. Huh? Yes. By the mile and driver behavior. Now, again, they are, they do require you to install their monitoring devices. Mm -hmm. And essentially, uh, they charge you. So when, when let's, say, let's say you get a quote, um, you tell them, okay, I'm going to, you know, do this many miles for the year. And you, you, pay, them, you pay them up front for mm -hmm. whatever that premium is versus the rates. Mm -hmm. And then every month, they adjust it. They either give you a credit mm -hmm. or they charge you more based on the miles that you've covered mm -hmm. and the driving behavior. So it is a double-edged sword, you know? Yeah, I was going to say, because for it, what I do as a business developer, yeah, I drive a lot. Yeah, so it is. <laughs> but if you were from home, 
you know, so yeah, we have a different work market right now since yeah. the pandemic, you know, the it, things are changed a lot. So hmm, something to look at. So could you explain why it's important to have a Spanish speaking insurance agent, sp uh, support staff, claims teams, and safety consultants? Yeah, absolutely. So essentially insurance is, is a contract that you're buying a contract. And a lot of times you, you have to know the ins and outs. Mm -hmm. And if, you know, if English is not your first language and you feel more comfortable in Spanish, and it's something that you have to know the details, it's really important for you to understand exactly what you're buying because mm -hmm. you are paying a lot of money for it. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, the biggest thing is that sometimes, you know, um, things get lost in maybe translation, maybe in English it means something, but in, in, in Spanish it means something else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest things is that uh, you always want to make sure what the pricing mechanism is. You know, what, what are my rates? Mm -hmm. what, what am I being rate, rated off? Mm -hmm. And what exactly my insurance is covering? And like you say, it's a contract. So for this, you know, the chambers serve the business community. So we all know what you need to know what you're signing and what you're getting into. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times you think you're covered for something when you're not, or maybe you are covered, covered for something, but in order for coverage to be applied, you have to meet certain conditions. Correct. So it's very important that you have a good understanding of what it is that you're buying. And, you know, if Spanish is your first language and you feel more comfortable, with that, with the explanation, it's a lot better. And then, you know, with with, with our agency, with Construction Casualty, um, we also have a Spanish-speaking support stuff. Okay. So, you know, if let's say that I'm not available, you know, one of my account managers can help you out and they speak Spanish. On top of that, we also have a claims team mm -hmm. that can kind of coach you and guide you if, you know, if you happen to have a claim, especially in the construction side, look, things mm -hmm. are going to happen. That's it. There is no perfect process. Yeah, I'm sorry. There is Even if it's a nail on your thumb, <laughs> something's going to happen. Anything. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we definitely help you out with that, with, with you know, with claims from, from all types of lines of insurance. And we have somebody who's going to guide you in culture. And then another cool thing that, that we really offer is that we, we actually have a, a safety consultant in the office. Mm. Yeah. And uh, we offer trainings, especially for the construction industry. Mm -hmm. And we can go to your job site we can go to your office you mm -hmm. can go to your home mm -hmm. and one of the biggest things that i that i that i get asked is okay yeah i'm super interested in that but my guys don't speak english mm -hmm. my guys only speak spanish do you have somebody that can give the training in spanish mm -hmm. and since we have a spanish speaking safety consultant the answer That's is awesome. yes that is yes. awesome and that is very important and people love that especially because when we come in you know we we give a formal training everything is documented we have, you know, everybody sign off and not only, you know, we could do it quarterly, we could do it as often as you want. The goal is mm -hmm. to um, prevent claims. Yes, yes. So this definitely will be very interesting in some of the upcoming projects that we have here in Tampa because the chamber as an organization, we get call from these projects. Hey, do you know of any safety consultant for construction? Oh, wow. Perfect. No, yeah. we literally get called for that. So, really? okay. yes, 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 we do. As a matter of fact, uh, one of our board members, she is a general contractor and an architect. And that was one of the first things when she moved here from Miami. She asked me, she says, do you know any safety consultant that speaks Spanish? Because most of the staff on this project don't speak English. Wow. They're great workers. They are. But safety is everything. You do know that. That, that can break a company. It really can. Yes, it really can. Yeah. So, but anyway, so it is, that is one of the things that is very important. So you kind of went into my next question with how does understanding job contracts relate to insurance policies and how can contract negotiation help reduce insurance costs? I am all ears. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, so a lot of the times, um, you know, when, when I get a client, um, typically uh, they're coming to me because they're trying to bid on a project, but a lot of times their, their insurance agent maybe is not um, construction focused. Maybe they don't know that industry mm -hmm. and, um, and they need certain coverages on their policies in order to bid for the contracts. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where I come in, look at the contract and see what you need. And a lot of times what I find is that sometimes they ask, they're asking for coverages that you don't need. For mm -hmm. example, mm -hmm. I had a contractor that, the contract was requiring cyber insurance. And 
was he a roofer? <laughs> Who does he need that for? He he was he was doing uh masonry block. And but yeah, so what happens is that some of these contracts are drafted up by a turn by attorneys. Yes. That they want to make sure they protect their client, but maybe they're they're not they don't apply to yeah. everybody. He's not one apply. size fits all. Or sometimes he asks for pollution. Where I mean, I guess if you're a contractor that deals with some type of contaminant, it applies. Mm -hmm. But so what we kind of do is that, personally, me, I kind of go through the contract and then probably, uh, you know, speak with the with the with the person in charge of that contract for the mm -hmm. company and be like, hey, look, listen, uh, I'm trying to help you out and help you get the subcontract mm -hmm. subcontract on the job site because they're also trying to get subs. Correct. It's also yes. hard yes. for them. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of like that bridge where I'm like, hey, look. We don't need this because of this. We don't need that because of that. And then we're, they're, able, they're able to revise the contract and like that. Mm -hmm. Not only am I able to save, save the, the contractor or the subcontractor mm -hmm. money because we're eliminating some of the mm -hmm. uh, requirements. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I'm helping the, you know, the, the prime get a sub in the job. You know, that is very interesting that you bring that subject because like my, my, my personal company, uh, we are a fuel supplier. We are the broker. So my company itself does not pump or a fuel, you know, whether it be diesel or gasoline, and our niche is construction. So we do not deliver. We actually get the client, get the contract, and our uh, distributor goes and deliver, actually deliver the fuel with their experts. We, you know, we deliver the tanks and then we make sure that we monitor it and then we uh, deliver it every week or, you know, as needed. So I got this guy that he says to me, Mercedes, I need a pollution contract and I'm in a general, in a workers comp. I say, I work in an office sitting on a desk. So I get a waiver. Mm -hmm. So I got a state waiver. And I said, now, you know, as far as like workers comp for everybody on the field, absolutely. But office people, we get a waiver for that. So you need to know your contracts or talk to your agent. So it's very important that you have a healthy relationship with your agent because you don't know what you don't know. And really, I was talking to somebody and she's like, she's, she does um, HR services and they ask her for, for, um, um, they ask for workers comp. I said, no, you get a waiver. You sit on a desk. Yeah. I mean, you know, so anyway, so you need to know what are your codes for the services that you provide and know because we don't need bonding. Now, the distributor have to have their safety program intact and insurance coverage, like top to bottom, you know, general liability, professional liability, all of those things. Absolutely. We have we have uh, general liability, but we do not need a workers comp for just me getting the contracts and, and you know, doing the paperwork to get it to my distributor. Do you yeah. see? No, you're absolutely right. And just to take it a step further, I do want to say that whatever industry you're in, mm -hmm. you want you want to get an insurance agent that knows your industry. That's right. So you don't get a restaurant niche insurance company to deal with constructions because it's so different. It's hard because a yes. lot of times you have to get into the weeds of things. Yes. You know, you have to, you know, you, the, the company wants to know exactly what you're doing. And sometimes when you are explaining, you know, how you, how you do your job, using the mm -hmm. terminology, terminology, terminologies of your industry. Sometimes mm -hmm. if the insurance agent is not familiar with the industry, he's not going to get it. Yeah. And yes. it's, and it's, it's, so that's why you that want to get so true. somebody so, in, in your industry. Yes, 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 absolutely. So uh, what are, um, let's see, let's see what other questions do I have for you. How does understanding job contracts relate to insurance policy and how the contract negotiation, no, we talked about that. Uh, how it reduces, how does it reduces the insurance cost? For the con contract? Yeah, for the contract, Yes. Yeah, so um, a lot of times we we will remove, you know, let's say that you need, for example, going back to the example that if you, let's say you need pollution and you need cyber, we, we'll, we'll go back to, to the contractor and we say, hey, your sub doesn't need that because there's not there's not a real exposure there. So we'll reduce that. And a lot, and a lot of times too, not only with, with lens of coverage, but also with limits. Because sometimes they'll ask, okay, so we want the contract will be the subcontractor you know, we won, you know, a $5 million general liability, and then we won a $10 million umbrella. And then sometimes, you know, yes. you, uh -huh. you have to ask, like, okay, like, do you want, you know, like 15 million? So 10 plus five is 15. So I had an example like that where I, I went back to the company. And I said, so do you need 15 million? And they're like, no, no, we just need 10. Okay, so 
then that means that instead of getting my client $5 million in generability and $10 million in, in, in umbrella, I just need to get him $1 million in generability and then $9 million in umbrella mm -hmm. so we can have a total of 10. It's like, the umbrella is cheaper, right? Yes. Okay. It's typically, typically the, the way the umbrella is priced is that it's 30% of mm -hmm. the underlying premium. Of the, okay. of, the yes. premium of the underlying policies. Okay. That's how it works. So that was an example because any, you know, maybe another agent that's not as knowledgeable would have been, okay, so I need a $5 million general liability and then, okay, and then I need a $10 million umbrella. And then because of that, since you're buying more, then your, your costs are high. Mm -hmm. And in construction, you know, you know, insurance is going to, it's going to be, I guess, aside from labor, it's going to be one of your most expensive mm -hmm. Expenses. Especially if it's bonding. Especially if it's bonding. Yes. And I, I was actually reading online that um, with insurance, when, when it comes to the construction industry, mm -hmm. um, in relation to, to revenue, mm -hmm. insurance is, 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 mm -hmm. is the most expensive for the construction industry. Wow. So yes. Yeah. That is amazing. So what is Comp Correct and how can I help control long-term insurance costs? Yeah, so Comp Correct is um, an... AI software that construction casualty created. Mm -hmm. And um, essentially what it does is that it helps manage the claims, um, specifically for workers comp. Okay. So we use that program a lot to help uh, companies um, lower their, their experience mod. Mm -hmm. And the, what it does is that it essentially, it, it tracks the claims and and, and the program runs about 30 days in advance of, of the company. So mm -hmm. for example, let's say uh, we have a work comp, we have a work comp claim. Um, we'll put everything into this, into the system. Mm -hmm. And then the software will start telling you what to do. Mm -hmm. Cause a lot of, a lot of the times what happens is that a claim happens and nobody knows what to do. Mm -hmm. the, the client doesn't know what, what to say. <laughs> yes. No, people are scared to say stuff like, oh, I don't want to say Oh, that I went thing. through that. Yes. So, so the program uh, alerts you as to what to do next. Oh, okay. And, and it helps you get all the information right away. So like that, we can give it, give it to the adjuster. Mm -hmm. And like that, we can get those, those doctor meetings set up in place. Mm -hmm. And like that, we can make the, the employee feel like he's get, getting taken care of. Because the minute he's home... And he's feeling desperate and nobody has called them. And maybe he spoke to the company three times and mm -hmm. he gets a different person. At that moment, they're gonna feel desperate. Mm -hmm. And what are they gonna do? They, they're gonna they're gonna call an attorney. So the whole idea if he hasn't come correct is to alert you, uh, guide you, guide you through through the process. We also gonna have we also have a team, a, like a you know, a team, a team behind it. Mm -hmm. And the idea is to just make sure that we close this claim as, as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. um, so like that, we can uh, manage your insurance costs better mm -hmm. year over year. And another cool thing that it does is mm -hmm. that um, there's a there's a, a rule in workers comp that essentially, um, when it comes to claims, there's, there's two buckets. Mm -hmm. There's one bucket, so there's, there's one bucket of where the insurance company is paying the medical cost, mm -hmm. and there's another bucket with the insurance company the, is, is paying the, the employee's salary, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. There's a rule in workers comp that if you only if the insurance company only has to pay the medical, mm -hmm. then the dollars that go in to factoring the mod they get discounted by seventy percent, mm -hmm. and that's how we help people with the mod. So what the program also does is that it calculates, right, mm -hmm. how much you would save. It does all the calculation mm -hmm. if instead of the insurance com instead of the insurance company paying the salary, mm -hmm. you continue to pay the salary while the insurance mm -hmm. company pays the medical. Mm -hmm. And it, it just it calculates that. How much mm -hmm. is it gonna is it gonna help you? Is it not gonna help is it not gonna help you? Mm -hmm. But what it really does is that it definitely decreases your money. That's a mouthful. So how can yeah. we reach you again? Share with us. <laughs> yeah, so we again, can call you at, guys, call help. <laughs> so you can call me at 305-790-8656. Um, that is my business cell. You can text me at that phone number too. And you can also email me as at S uh, Puerta at CCI-INS.com.
Mm -hmm. Or you can call the chamber because oh, yes. he is a chamber <laughs> member. You can call us at 813-867-3550. And one more question, and then we can just have fun with this. So can you explain the principle of risk management and how insurance fits into it as a, com as a, as a component? Yeah, absolutely. So essentially, that's what we, as a company, that, that's that's what we bring, because insurance is 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 just a part of it. So, um, kind of touching back on what we discussed with insurance, you you essentially have three pillars, and you have risk prevention, you have uh, risk transfer, which is insurance, you're moving it away, mm -hmm. and then you have risk reduction. Okay. Which is your once you have the claim, you're you're trying to eliminate eliminate that. So. Mm -hmm. That's essentially what we're offering you. So mm -hmm. we have our safety consultant that does the training. Um, and that essentially is the risk prevention, mm -hmm. trying to prevent stuff. Mm -hmm. Then we have uh, the insurance portion, which is what we also do. Mm -hmm. And that's the part where we're transferring the risk away from your company. Mm -hmm. And then we also have the comp correct that, that we just spoke about mm -hmm. and also our, our claims team. And that is the risk reduction team. Mm -hmm. I said, well, that's a risk reduction aspect where we try to limit the claims dollars that the insurance company pays out. Mm -hmm. So like that, so like that, we can keep your, your, pre your, your costs mm -hmm. better year over year. So, and so that in circle is essentially what we, what we do. Okay. Huh. Interesting guys call him. I know we're going to call you Perfect, because yeah. uh, we were going to have an event and they asked us to put an umbrella what I did not realize until after I read the contract that it says it's suge it was suggested. It was not uh, mandatory. And I, we got that umbrella for two extra million and it was suggested. And so I said, uh huh, a suggestion is a suggestion. I can suggest that you drink water, but you just drink wine. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to. Yeah. So, but thank you so much for all that information because I do know that all of the members, you know, as we move on and we work and guys, please make sure that you do uh, uh, register to get the newsletter every month and make sure that you read it when it comes out because there's a lot of great information for the community when we live when we deal with disasters as a company there are some things that we like you to do to be in position to provide services that's a statewide when we have things like that and insurance for sure is one of those that you do need to position yourself and another thing that i wanted to mention because i learned that with an association that i was the president before this one and it was that um we put a bid for a project with the Department of Transportation, and we had a letter of insurability, not the insurance yet, because we were not awarded. Okay. So a lot of people buy insurance for what? What are you insuring? If you don't have a contract, what are you insuring? So it's healthy to build a relationship, and your agent can give you a letter of insurability of your capacity. And once you get awarded, then you get the insurance with the L, you know, with the LC for that particular project, right? So Absolutely. that is something that is very useful for people not to waste money when they start, right? Uh, now it depends if you if you're gonna have a company that is in trucking or something like that, you cannot even get uh, a, a, your USDOT. Uh, number without actually having the insurance. So it depends. It depends, yeah. It depends. But if you want to put bids, most likely you can get a letter of insurability before you commit to an insurance if you don't have a project to insure. So remember what it's really insurance for. So with that, I wanted to thank you, Sergio, miembro de la Cámara de Comercio Hispana de la Bahía de Tampa Bay. Yay! <laughs> Así que cualquier pregunta que tengan, con confianza, llámenlo al... Uh, 305-790-8656. O oh, pueden llamar al 81396. Ya le iba a dar mi teléfono. No me llamen. 813-867-3550. O oh, you can go to www.tampahispanichamber.com. Un placer en conversar con ustedes. Chao, chao.